my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. This is the great God we are serving. Justin King is the one that has jealously kept you. He has never allowed the hand of sin to sway you away from the kingdom of God. Give God the glory. Thank him. He has never allowed anything to push you away. Push away your motivation in the service of God. Push away your motivation in the consecration which you are putting in. Give God that glory. Thank him, my brother, my sister. Exalt his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 37, verse 15, And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seeketh thou? What seeketh thou? My sister, why are you here today? My brother, why are you here today? Are you just here for coming sake? Or are you here for some specific things that God must do for you? Why are you here? I want you to outline those things and tell the Lord. Almighty God, I am not here for fun. I am not here for a routine. I must come for combined service. Never. That is not the reason I am here today. Open your mouth, tell God, why are you here today? Talk to God. I know you are not here just for fun, to come and see friends, to come and see people. Why are you here? My sister, why are you here? The newcomers joining us today, why are you here? To come and see the building? That shouldn't be the essence why you are here. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Luke chapter 24, and in verse 45, then opened he their understanding. Our Lord Jesus Christ opened he, opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, that they might understand the scriptures. My brother, my sister, the scriptures, they are the words of God. The words of God is the creating potent power that made the whole world. The day I understand the scriptures, there will be recreation in my life. The day you understand the scriptures, Recreation will come into your life. Open your mouth, tell God, Almighty God, I am here today to understand the scriptures that recreated the whole world. Father, open my heart. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God that the Almighty God will open your heart, recreate your heart. 
Expunge every stony heart there and replace it with heart of flesh to understand the scriptures. Pray that as we are praying here, even our brethren that are yet to come, the same thing will happen to them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Finally, let us pray that every tool, every instrument that God will use today, that God's anointing will rest upon them. Every tool, right from the people bringing orderliness here, right from the people securing us here, right from the people that are going to minister to us one way or the other. Father in heaven, please, we are praying, let your anointing, your power, your mighty hand rest upon them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together for blessing. I am praying and asking that no one will escape your blessing today in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that heaven will open. Father, heaven will open. The ladders will be dropped down. Angels will be coming down and going up, coming down, going up in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We'll remain standing as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs. Number three, impatient heart, be still. What though he tarries long? What though the triumph song is still delayed, thou hast his promise sure, and that is all secured. Be not afraid, be not afraid. Be still, be still. Impatient heart, be still. My eager heart, be still. Thy Lord will surely come and take thee to his home, with him to dwell. It may not be today, and yet, my soul, it may. I cannot tell, I cannot tell. Be still, be still, my eager heart, be still. My anxious heart, be still. Watch, work, and pray, and then it will not matter when. Thy Lord shall come at midnight or at noon. It cannot come too soon to take thee home, to take thee home. Be still, be still, my anxious heart, be still. <laughs>
Good morning, everybody. Can we close our eyes to pray as we enter the period of searching the scriptures? Our Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you, Father, because you have brought us here to worship in your presence. You have brought us here to bless us. Thank you for the encouragement you have just received from the song that you have just sung, that we should be still. Because whatever you have promised, you are going to bring to pass. Whatever you have spoken, you are going to do it. As we look into the scriptures this morning, we are asking, Father, that you speak to us by your spirit in Jesus' name. What you did in the time of old, Father, we pray in our time today, you will do again in Jesus' name. Grant us illumination. Grant us understanding. Help us, O oh Lord, to be obedient to your word in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because of answered our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today we are going to lesson seven, titled, The Bath of Isaac, Heir of Promise. The Bath of Isaac, Heir of Promise. Our text is going to be taken from Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 to verse 34. But we're going to just take some parts of the uh, chapter. Our memory verse is taken from Genesis 21, verses 1 and 2. Can we have someone from the congregation to recite the memory verse for us? And as we're coming forward, also come with your Bible because we're going to read the text. Yes, my brother there. The memory verse is from Genesis 21, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare a son to Abraham in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Genesis 21, verse 1 and 2. Thank you very much. Take your Bible and read from Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 to 8. Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Verse 3. And Abraham called the name of a son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight years old, as God has commanded him. Verse 5. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Verse 6. And, Abraham, and Sarah said, God had made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. Verse 7. And he said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have born him a son in his old age. Verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Verse 14 to verse 19. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Verse 16, and she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow short. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. Verse 17, and God heard the voice of the Lord, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of the heaven, and said unto her, what aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God had heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Verse 18, arise. Lift up the Lord and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Verse 31 to 34. Verse 31. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because they were swear both of them. Verse 32. Thus they, thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up, and Phi called the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba. And called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Verse 34. And Abraham sojourned in a Philistine land many days. Thank you very much. 
in today's study, we are focusing on the faithfulness of God to his promise to those who patiently wait for him. God's call to Abraham was hinged on the promise of making him a blessing to all the families of the earth, as we see in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Although barren for 20 years, God still maintained that he would give them a son in their old age. But in this waiting period, Abraham yielded to pressure from his wife and got Ishmael through Aga, the bondwoman. This singular error nearly broke this godly family apart and also resulted, unfortunately, to a problem that still plagues the world until today. What can we learn from the episode that we are reading about in this chapter? One, we can learn that in total obedience lies divine blessings without regrets. If you want to have blessing from God without regretting, then make sure you totally obey him. Secondly, God, the originator of marriage, must remain the ultimate guide in all matters in the family. Any suggestions that is contrary to his word from either of the spouses, from family members, from church leaders, any suggestion that is contrary to the word of God must be outrightly rejected, no matter how reasonable or logical it may sound. And number three, love between husband and wife must not be blind to matters of faith and godliness. There's nothing like love is blind when it comes to matters of faith and godliness. In all our considerations and decisions, therefore, our motto must always be God first, family next, and others last. I pray the Lord will give us the grace to obey this in Jesus' name. We are going to quickly consider three subtopics. Number one, the birth of Isaac in fulfillment of God's promise. Two, the bondwoman and her son sent away. Three, the Beersheba covenant between Abraham and Abimelech. We go to number one. The birth of Isaac in fulfillment of God's promise. I read again from Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God is a promise keeper. Whatever he has spoken, he will bring to pass. Whatever he has promised, he will do it. Delay is never a denier with our God. What is that vision that God has given to you? What is that promise that God has given to you? The fact that it's not coming as early as you think does not mean that God is denying you. If you can wait patiently, you will receive the blessing in Jesus' name. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, he shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. I pray that, that that dream that you have from God, that vision that he has given to you, as you wait patiently for him, you will soon realize it in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 17, God was trying to remind Abraham that he has made a promise to him that he was going to give him a child. But when Abraham heard it, Abraham bowed down his head and was laughing. I'm almost 100 years. My wife is very old. God, you don't need to bother about that. We are okay with the way we are. In Genesis chapter 18, again, when the angel came to Abraham, Abraham and, 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 and Sarah, and they were telling her that next year you are going to have a child, Sarah also laughed. What kind of laugh can you call this? Is it a laugh of faith? No. This is the kind of laugh that you call laugh of pious resignation to faith. F-A-T-E. Laugh of pious resignation to faith. They are saying we are believers. God, we are okay with the way we are. You haven't given us uh, Ishmael, so we are okay. Don't worry. We are still going to serve you. We, resi we resign ourselves to faith. That is not what God expects of a believer's. Of, of believers, rather. Believers are not to surrender to faith, but we are to surrender in faith. 
You are not to surrender to faith and say, okay, this is that, that's how it will be. Let it be so. I'm still going to get to heaven. Don't surrender to your faith. Surrender to God in what? In faith. And I pray the Lord will give us that grace in Jesus' name. That's exactly what Abraham eventually realized. When in the book of Romans chapter 4, let's read Romans chapter 4, verse 19, that rather than surrendering to faith, he had to surrender in faith. In Romans chapter 14, we read from verse 19. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Sorry, Romans chapter 4 rather, verse 19. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, not now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Abraham realized that he should not surrender to his faith. He rather surrendered to God in faith that God, I'm going to wait for as long as you will want me to wait. But I believe one thing, that what you have spoken to me, I know you will do it. You know that some people that when, when God promised them something, they will look for alternatives like Abraham has done. Say, so, uh, Ishmael is there, okay, well, okay for us. I'm a believer, as long as I'm a believer, all is well. I've prayed to God, I want, to, I want God to bless me. The blessing is not coming. Okay, if I'm poor until, I'm, until I die, no problem, I'll still serve God. I've been sick all the way. God said, will heal me, but healing is not come. Oh, Lord, I surrender to, to this sickness. Let it take me and, and I go. That's not what God is asking us to do. We are to surrender in faith, not to surrender to our faith. And I pray the Lord will help us as we surrender in faith like Abraham, the promise will come to reality in Jesus' name. Are you barren and you are saying, God, no problem? I haven't gone ahead to adopt a child. There is no need. I know of a sister who was barren for several years, and eventually they went to adopt a child, the child was named, but at that time she was, she was uh, adopting a child, she was actually carrying something like a pregnancy. For some years, she would go to hospital, they would say, it's pregnant, next time they say there's nothing there. And because of that, she went, okay, let's go ahead and, and adopt a child. But I tell you that after four years of carrying that pregnancy, the child was born. Today, they even have other children over that child because God is a God of miracles. And even though you have gone ahead to, 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 to adopt a child out of God, I don't, I don't mind, I'll adopt a child and I'll give up on childbearing. I pray as to believe the Lord, those children will come in Jesus' name. Number three, we see that Abraham, after, giving, after having this child, he was able to obey God in the issue of the Abrahamic covenant of circumcision. And this is a challenge to us as believers that obedience to the word of God must be a top priority for us, even when it sounds, it looks difficult or painful to the flesh. This child did not become so much of a treasure to Abraham and say, I don't want this child to suffer. I don't want this child to, to go through any pain. Therefore, I would rather disobey God. No, Abraham went ahead to obey God and the Lord blessed him for it. As we obey the Lord as a top priority, the blessing of God will come upon our lives in Jesus' name. We go to number two, the bond woman and her son sent away. The bond woman and her son sent away. In Genesis chapter 21, we read from verse 9. And Sarah saw the son of Agar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. In, Gen in Galatians chapter 4, verse 22, the scriptures explain the difference between Isaac and um, Ishmael. In, Genesis, in Galatians chapter 4, we read from verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he, who was of the bondwoman, 
was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. So we see that Sarah's request to throw away the child, Ishmael, and the mother was genuine. And that was why God himself supported that idea and told Abraham to listen to the woman and send the child and the mother away. We also know that in Genesis chapter 17, verse 20, God has actually promised that he was going to bless Ishmael because of his connection with Abraham. But God has a different plan for that. He has a different purpose for that. But the son of the bond woman and the son of the free could not stay together in the same house. What are the lessons we learn from this? Isaac was the son of promise, while Ishmael was the seed of perversion. He, he was the seed of perversion. Therefore, both of them could not dwell together without problem. When Sarah demanded that this be done, Abraham was grieved in his heart. But God told him, no, don't be grieved. I'll answer your wife. Do what she has asked you to do. In this, we learn something. Although Abraham was grieved for Sarah's request to throw away Ishmael, he had no choice but to obey divine instruction. For believers today, sentimental attachment must not stand in the way of obedience, in the way of absolute obedience to God, if we will truly be his friend and receive his blessings. We must not allow any kind of sentimental attachment to a wife, to a husband, to a friend, to a family, to hinder us from obeying God absolutely, because that is the only way we can be his friend and obtain his blessings. Like I said, in Genesis 17, 22, the Lord has promised Abraham that because of you, I'm going to bless this child Ishmael. What can we learn? Because at the point, after Abraham had driven them away, in Genesis chapter 21, uh, from verse 14, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. It was like an end of journey for Ishmael that God had promised already that was going to bless. But God is always faithful to his promise. What can we learn from this incident? Divine favor that Agar and Ishmael received was only as a result of their attachment to Abraham. They did not merit it. They were not meant to have it. But because they had an attachment to a man that God has blessed, and therefore God said, because of you, I am going to bless that child. I'm going to provide for them. Therefore, when the child will have died of thirst in the wilderness, God himself miraculously provided a well in the midst of the desert. We can learn something from this. There are sinning relatives, sinning sons, sinning daughters, sinning husbands, sinning wives, but things are going well for them. I said, if God is angry with me, why is everything going well with me? You have to learn something from here. You should not take God's favor over your life for granted because it could be as a result of a praying father, a supplicating mother, an interceding brother, a divinely favored companion that you attach to. That may be the reason why God is blessing you. Think of Abraham and Lot. Lot was blessed because of his attachment to Abraham, not because of himself. Think of Paul the Apostle and the 276 souls that were with him in the ship. And the ship was about to break apart. And Paul went before God. And the angel appeared to Paul in Acts chapter 27. And he told him, Paul, don't worry. You are not going to die in this ship. 
you are going to get to where you are going. Rome is your destination. But not only you alone, because these people are with you, because of you, I'm going to preserve them. That was how those 270 souls were preserved from destruction, from dying. Therefore, if you are a sinner, you are living in sin, and you think that because things are going well, I can take God for granted, you may be enjoying the blessing of God because of who you are attached to. Therefore, let the goodness of God bring you to repentance rather than hardening your heart in rebellion. The Lord will help such people in Jesus' name. We go to the last part of our study, the Beersheba covenant between Abraham and Abimelech. Genesis 21, verse 22. Genesis 21, verse 22. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. We can see some things in the life of Abraham, things worthy of emulation, things that we as believers should follow. The godly life of Abraham was so clear to people around. And God was so pleased with his godly life that God blessed him. So the people saw the godly life of Abraham, they saw the blessing that followed it, and they became afraid.